the last video, you left the action, and I use the word action in its loosest possible terms, up in the hills above the French-Spanish border. We then headed west to the beautiful city of San Sebastian. After visiting the Pinto Bar, and as I wandered the lovely narrow streets that were steeped in history, I couldn't help but think to myself, where on earth did I leave Blanche? Yes, of course, she was safely parked in one of the city's underground car parks. So, I guess you're all bursting with anticipation as to what happens next. And if you're not, well, here it is anyway. And in this video, I get excited by a castle with a lighthouse on it. A castle and a lighthouse. What's not to like? I get bashed on the head. Ow! I don't care that he's chucking it down with rain. I don't care that he's chucking it down with rain. And there's spooky feline goings on in a cemetery. So all that to come. We're still on our ever eventful epic journey down through Europe aiming to reach the Portuguese Algarve by Christmas. And if we haven't already met, I'm Billy, and this is Blanche, my fabulous 1989 Citroen C15 Roma Home camper van. As I've said before, one of the joys of setting the sat-nav to avoid toll roads is you come across some really lovely drives and this one was no exception. So as we headed away from San Sebastian, we hit a lovely stretch of coast road. It reminded me a little bit of the Amalfi Coast in Italy, but without all the mad Italian drivers. It's a shame the weather wasn't a little bit better, but there's still something lovely about driving a coast road so close to the sea. So much so, in fact, that I decided to stop for a spot of lunch and a cup of tea. Oh, I nearly forgot, just before we get into that, a quick word from this bloke. Well, hello and welcome to the Billy and Blanche channel here on YouTube. As you can see from that intro, a fair bit has been happening. So we left the Spanish border and we headed over to uh, San Sebastian, which was lovely. We got one more stop to make before we head along the Camino de Santiago down to Santiago de Compostela. But before we get into that, as always, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone for following and subscribing. We have gone over 200 subscribers now. Now that doesn't sound like a grand amount considering how many people do have. I didn't think people would be that interested in a bloke in his old camper traveling down through Europe, but people are, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Thank you for all the comments. I will try to reply to them when I can. They're getting more and more, so it's getting a little bit more involved to reply to them, but I really do appreciate it. If you're new around here, please do hit the like and the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when I post another video. So we're on to part four. We head on to the Camino de Santiago Norte, which is the north route taking us across to head down towards Portugal and beyond. So I won't bore you any further. Again, Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it and I always have to come on and tell everybody that before we get into the video proper. So, there's some stuff coming up in this one. So enjoy and I'll see you all again soon. So, back to our pit stop and after a very nice chorizo sausage baguette butty and even though it was chucking it down with rain, I decided to take my tea and look at the sea in this lovely little bay. I don't care that he's chucking it down with rain. But we had a few more miles to do that day, so after a brief stop at a very nice viewpoint of the Virgin of Ithia, it was time to get on the road again. Upbeat flamenco driving music required. crisscross the spectacular mountain roads and tunnels. And 
as we weaved our way in and out underneath the autostrada, I couldn't help but think of all those poor people above us parting with their hard earned cash just to sit on a motorway and get there a little bit quicker. The gift of time is indeed a luxury. So, our next stop was the small city of Castro Erdiales. The weather turned pretty rotten again as we skirted round the edge of Bilbao. In fact, come to think of it, I've seen nothing but rain really since I left central France. Would I ever see the sun again? So we arrived in Castro Erdiales after dark, found a park up and then hoped for better weather the next day. Well, it's Wednesday the 29th of November and it's a really nice day. After incessant rain for what seems like days, it's 19, 20 degrees. I've even got my shorts on. I've worked this morning and done some bits and bobs and now I'm treating myself to a couple of hours at the castle and lighthouse, finally. I always think there's something quite surreal when you've been looking at something online for so long and then you actually, all of a sudden it's there in front of you. So come with me to visit the Castle Lighthouse. Whilst I was researching this trip and looking for places to visit along my route, I was of course looking for lighthouses. But Castro Erdiales has the 13th century castle of Santa Anna. And on one of the turrets in 1853, they built a lighthouse. So this just had to be done. Here I am, Castro Erdiales. Let's go and take a look. This small city has a rich maritime history and also has the lovely church of Santa Maria della Asuncion. It looked like it was undergoing some renovations, but was still well worth a look inside. It was then time for what I really came all this way to see. It was great to finally be here, and anyone who knows me well knows I like a good lighthouse. I'm also partial to a good castle as well. So as I made my way up the medieval steps and path, I was not disappointed. And so, dear viewer, I make no apologies in advance for the following gratuitous lighthouse scene. Getting my lighthouse and castle fix, I headed back to civilization. And like most Spanish towns and cities, they come alive in the evening. I'm in a lovely little area um, with lots of bars along here. Got this off of here, so cheers. There's um, what looks like full-size Punch and Judy characters wandering around. I don't know if they're going to put on some sort of show. I'm not sure whether they're funny or scary if I was a little kid. Yes, I've worked it out. I think, I think the kids are supposed to bash them. So yes, maybe it is a, 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 a form of Punch and Judy that's evolved Spanish style. And like the big kid that I am, I had to go and get involved. This sailor was definitely drunken and it wasn't long before I got dubiously clobbered. Help! 
and ignored by a dragon. And I've often wondered what happened to Michael Barrymore. New British Prime Minister, perhaps? And Popeye and Minnie Mouse had really let themselves go, and there was Noel Gallagher in a dress. I had, in fact, accidentally stumbled across the Fiesta de San Andreas, another nautical tradition that dates back to the 16th century. I'm not sure what the lion's got to do with it, though. These were the Gigantes y Cabizudos, the giants with the big heads. So it seems that pretty much the whole town had turned out for it. I managed not to get press gang by the Gigantes. It was a great atmosphere and I'm really glad I was there to experience it. So as the crowd made its way up through the town, it was time for me to bid goodnight to the castle and the lighthouse and make my way back to Blanche. Because the following day, things were going to get even stranger. Well, I did say stranger, didn't I? And if you're not one of these weird people like me who is fascinated by walking around cemeteries, now's a good time to go and put the kettle on. Don't worry. I should still be here when you get back. So this is Bellina Cemetery. And on park for night, it's recommended that you can park your camper in the car park. So that's exactly what I did with Blanche. Strangely though, we were the only ones. People had also recommended exploring it. It is actually a very beautiful and peaceful place where many of the dearly departed are honoured with mausoleums that are like mini churches in themselves. The cemetery is situated on a beautiful headland just west of the city of Castro Erdiales. But its other fascinating feature is its custodians. Cats. Lots and lots of them. Now you often hear people say, when I go, I'm going to come back as a cat. So I came up with this lovely romantic notion that these are all the people who said they wanted to come back as cats, living happy and free in this lovely cemetery. It's also said that cats have senses that we humans don't. And these two definitely know something, as they stood guard either side of this tomb. After an unsurprisingly peaceful night, it was time to head off again and hit the Camino de Santiago and head down to Santiago de Compostela. So after a morning pit stop, and with Blanche's fluids nicely topped up, it was time to hit the road again. Okay, I'm on the Autovia del Cantabrico. Um, it was a nice sunny day, but it's, uh, I seem to have hit a little bit of rain. The scenery here, the scenery is absolutely stunning. It's not, it's, it's basically like Scotland meets Cornwall, because we're on a coast road, uh, a road that hugs the coast. Um, of northern Spain and to my left I've got mountains that look like you could be in Scotland and to the right you've got some coastline that looks like you could be in Cornwall um, it's quite something uh, I'm really enjoying this uh, leg of the journey so far I'm 390 kilometers from uh, Santiago del Compostela making good progress west we were indeed making good progress Santiago de Compostela will make a turning point for us, as after we visited the city, we will be going south and finally heading towards Portugal. I'll take you on a tour of the city in the next video. It's really rather lovely. But for now, thanks as always for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, as there's loads more to come on this trip as we continue the adventures of Billy and Blanche.